he has good technique, he will be elite. If his technique becomes great, not just good, then he's a Hall of Famer. Fighting through contact, fighting through offensive line, being a double team, multiple moves stacked into one, just a play of pure domination. This is actual film, this is actual football talk. It's a football show, we're supposed to football, not storylines. Comfort, read, snap, release, O-line. Okay. Um, so let's watch again. This is – now we have 11 um, with this inverted tight slot. And let's just watch. O-line played well too, I guess. Yeah. The O-line was pretty good this game. Um, so I, I hope I had the other angle from this too. Yeah, okay. So let's watch again. So they just run double post, really common concepts, like a vertical stretch. And um, his reads are going to be inside, outside. And you can see from the other angle um, where he's reading the middle of the field. He reads Crowder. Obviously, Crowder is is covered um, right here. They run like it looks like a cover, uh, cover two with a whole player right here uh, with a rat, whatever you want to call it. And – reads the middle of the field. And again, the safeties are reading the eye, like, you know, obviously depending on the play and what they're, what, if they're, if they're pattern matching, whatever it may be. But for the most part, you know, you, you want to look off the safeties um, and you're not even necessarily look off the safeties. I think people just going for the progression sometimes mis, misread it for, for being looking off the safeties, but you want to be decisive in your reads where you're not going to have to stare at things and, and throw the ball. Like that's what I talked about with him at BYU. His, he sees a guy. Not he doesn't have to see a guy open to throw the ball, but it also with with that there's also the quick trigger that he has. Like some guys have to. Okay, the post is open, but I have to check real quick. Like the indecisiveness. He he trusts what he sees and he, and he delivers the ball, and he's looking to, uh, towards the middle of the field and the and the inside post right here from uh, from Crowder. Um, doesn't want to deliver that. His eyes quickly flip. You're gonna see his eyes right here. Flip, deliver the ball. So what? One, two, three, five step drop, read the post, re hitch, clean hitch, deliver the ball to the post. And it's, and it's such a quick, it's just a quick look inside, outside. And that, that decision to throw the ball is, is a split second. Load up, quick release, puts the ball right on uh, Corey Davis's face. He gets a nice little yak with it with the juke right there. But um, you can see, you can see right here middle, 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 middle. look, see the post, strike it. And there are times too, where I, I can't tell hundred percent on this play because of his eyes. There are times where Wilson does a really good job. Um, I'm not going to guarantee this is what happens here. Cause it almost looks like it does when I look at his eyes right now. Um, let me see. So his head is forward. Like you see his eyes are forward right now in the middle of the field, the post. Now I can't tell if his eyes go to the left a little bit here because now he's reading the middle of the field. And then he was reading the, the, the inside post from Crowder or if there are times where he looks like he almost has no look passes where his head is forward, but his eyes are to the side. So he'll really do a good job of keeping his head and looking in the side of his eyes to see, to see, um, to see his like his, his next read. Um, because you know, defenders are reading his helmet and their shoulders and things like that. But if you could, if you could read at the side of your eyes and not have to actually turn to it and then obviously be quick enough to, to strike and throw the ball. Um, that's another trait that he has. Like I'm not guaranteeing that he does that here. It looks like it was middle of the field. Then the, then the, the first read, which is the inside post and the second read, um, which comes right here. You see it? Look, throw. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 inside to outside. Outside. Nice ball carriage, quick release. Strike, disassociation. Clean ball. Right on his face. Hell of a play. Again. Um next three, the first four plays of the game were Zach Wilson. My god, that's gonna be a Zach Wilson heavy show, obviously. Um, he's throwing 30 passes in a game. We might be watching 28 plays of Zach Wilson. He keeps playing like he is, which I'm sure a lot of people will be fine with. It's just going to take me four hours to do a show, which I'm cool with doing. If it's good quarterback play, that is that is for damn sure. For the people who've been watching since the, you know, Josh McCown and some of the bad Sam Donald days, and you know whatever else we've 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 gone through, um, is what it is. So Wilson reads pocket Wesco tank. <laughs> 
again, I watch this stuff and I, it's not like I put like purpose to this. Like I'm not like putting the formation and, and the throw, like I'm just putting how I remember it when I'm putting this in my notes and how to cue this stuff up. So don't read too much into the top, even though I'm pretty sure that's what Eagle just, just uh, puts in the, in the timestamps, but you get the point. You know, if you, if you know how I do the segments, I do one guy at a time for the most part. So if you see his name, click on the first Wilson play, you know, don't go back. Oh, I want to, I want to really see that, you know, that scissors concept, which play is that? Like, it's probably not going to be in here. Um, where I'll discuss it as I go. So another, another uh, 21 right here for the Jets. We're going to talk about LaFleur too. Cause I, I like that, how he, he creates space for an East to West offense as Sable likes to put it. I just say horizontal offense. He creates space, uh, space with condensed splits and receivers being tight because when receivers are tight and you're condensed, there's a lot of traffic and you can't get on guys, whether it be a zone and you're trying to reroute press when you're condensed and tight, it's hard to do that because there's a lot of traffic. So guys have to play a little bit more off. So he dictates off coverage um, based on those, you know, those tight, those nasty, those uh, whatever splits you want to call them. Um, so he does a good job with that. Um, and he also, you know, does a good job just with misdirection and with, with, you know, with fake sifters and bluff blocks and, you know, and fake end rounds, just moving linebackers and kind of keeping um, them off of their keys. You know, it's, it's really nice. So I like, I like before too um, in general, and this is preseason stuff too. So Wilson reads pocket West Coast. Okay. Sorry. Again, I'm, I apologize for the little bit of allergies right now, but I wish I could have got the trial tomorrow, but, uh, or yesterday, but work was absurd. There's no way I was doing this after I had a, I were a midnight guy. I worked day shift and day shift was, not fun yesterday. So I came home and I was gassed. So here again, play action. Um, now maybe he could have sold us a little bit better. Um, I can't, I can't hundred percent tell. It's a little tiny criticism that I, I well, Sam knows a massive criticism because he never stuffed the ball. He looks, like he does it here, um, at least decently. So it's a, it's a better play action than we've seen from, from, uh, um, Sam Donald. Oh, I actually want to go back to, I, I apologize. I, I, I mentioned the offensive line in the last fight. I, I, I have a problem with that sometimes where like, especially the, the rusty me, I'll start to go through stuff and not look at the rest of the, the of the positions in the offensive line. Um, again, we'll talk about some of these guys in the future uh, in, in the end of the podcast towards the end. All really good job. Back then, good job staying square, balanced, hands on, pushes his guy. Um, up to the arc, he can't get to to Wilson. You have a ton of room inside. You know, uh, you have Croft versus a linebacker, Dan, whatever it is. Uh, Fant does a good job dropping off, picking him up. So a really good job of the offensive line in general. Um, this this game, um, f- awareness of Feeney. You know, checking the the ninety six while also looking at fifty three. Like really good job by all those guys there. So I'm gonna mention that. I'll definitely start talking about offensive line more once I have the um, the end zone view, just because it's it's more clean to watch it. Where the sideline, it's not as it's it's you could break it down, but um, not to the level that I necessarily want. So, um, of course, the freaking allergies right now. So, um, watch this again. The play action, like we just discussed, I just kind of got sidetracked and want to go back to the last play. Goes through um, his reads. You have two. You have, the, you have the running back and the fullback both both working through um, on just short of like sit route. Well, he's like a bench route. And he's like a sit route. Um, as as the checkdowns, I can't tell what the concept is. Deep um, might be another post wheel. I think it is a post wheel. I think I saw, saw someone else break this down. I think a lot of the other guys, Nani and all of them, had uh, some some time to do this, some of the all twenty two stuff. Um, so I believe one of them put up this plan, and, and it was a post wheel regardless. Um, this is his checkdown. This is his third read of that, most likely, where you have the post. If he is one, the wheel is going to be his two. Um, and this is his checkdown. So he goes through his reads pretty comfortable. Again, look at that pocket. Like, yeah, you have one guy, you have one guy who, um, you know, rushed up the arc here against Herndon. But even like Herndon does a pretty good job of, of sticking him and pushing him up the arc. But from the rest of the offensive line uh, perspective, you have Beckton hands on, good base, locked him down. You have the two inside guys right here where I can't tell 100% who rips. It, it's, it's McGovern. McGovern gets his hands on to the defensive tackle, I believe it is. And you're, you're going to see him right here rip down. So I can't tell if he traps the right hand, if he, if he chops it down and then rips him down to the ground. But, they, but he rips the 
um, interior defense lineman to the ground. You have you have uh, GVR who gets into to, to his his defender, completely locking him up. Like, look at the offensive line he has right here in terms of the, the room. And I know it's some backups, all this stuff, but like a lot of people are talking about, you know, the the offensive line struggling consistently through practice and mainly based on stats. But like Salah kind of not insinuated, but that's the best word, but like if you're going to be in a practice where the team knows you're throwing it on third and 10, just based on the situation you're giving to the other team in terms of these, these, these uh, joint practices or, or even defensive coordinator versus offensive coordinator from the same team. If these guys know they can rush with not, without having to worry about the rummings, that's a, that's the look you want. Or maybe you're putting the offensive line in a bad position where you want to see how they rebound from a bad position. Like they're, they're practicing all these things. So to say, Oh, they're, they're struggling. They're going to suck because you don't, but you don't know the situations are being put in in practice. is kind of a stretch Now you can note it. Um, if it continues throughout the games, but through two games, the starting offensive line has been pretty good, no? So it's not as big of a concern as it should be for some people out there. So a um, couple of going through his reads, obviously. Um, the, the one thing I like to, and Sabo brought this up in his video, which I thought was really good, you can see his eyes are downfield. And it's such a little thing, like we mentioned about with the flat, like you mentioned about with whatever else we, we talk about with, with the little things. Um, I know I know that that so I'm going to get one, at least one comment on it. Oh, dude, you should blow your nose. Like it's... <laughs> I can't, I apologize. Um, but the one thing I really like about him is his, his decisiveness to throw it to the flat. Like he knows one, where his flat's going to be, where his checkdown's going to be. And he's not a guy who has to, to flip, be slow, throw it. Like he's really quick on one, two, three, check it down because that, that extra millisecond, that extra quarter of a second, whatever it is, that he takes to throw that ball is less room that Wesco or where, whoever his check down is to, to, to catch that ball one, two, to turn and run up field. So he's really, really quick to hit his check down here. And, you, and you'd see it just um, watch it again, but just notice his eyes deep and how quick he is to look at check down, throw down a check down. Deep, deep, deep check down throw. A little bit off platform. Um, now, not, not, not necessarily off platform. Like he, you know, again, not the best mechanics in terms of like, how like stepping up through the throw, but he, he ste- he's stepping up because of this pressure. So it's not like he's able to like fully set and he just wants to get out of the, rid of the ball, you know, relatively quickly for, for yak. So yeah, you know, he's not able to rotate over, over this, this foot, which is more closed. He's, he's more pointed towards the sideline, but this is just natural arm talent taking over on, on a, on a off platform type throw. Um, but puts the ball again, good spot. Maybe you want a tiny bit lower, I like, like a, an inch. <laughs> 